What's happening, America? Dr. Wimmerly on here. We're at the top of the hour. Final hour of the program. Uh, you're going inside the issues here on Sirius XM Satellite Radio 110. And that's a little bit of the cylinder off of the last, the complete last concert, the Modern Jazz Quartet at Avery Fisher Hall, November 25th, 1974. And uh, that's, a, that's a swinging cut right there. You'll hear more of that throughout this last hour. Got a couple questions uh, that I want you all to ponder. How important is image? How important is it to see yourself as a positive image? How important is it to be able to turn those negative stereotypes that the dominant culture has subscribed to you into a positive self-image? What role does art play in all of this? To answer these and some other questions, we turn to my next guest, a self-taught painter and photographer. Uh, At a young age, he developed a talent for the arts, especially painting with acrylics, which allowed him to experiment with vibrant color combinations. He's also developed enthusiasm for music and fashion, eventually leading him to New York, opening him to a world of culture and creativity. He has worked as a visual merchandising manager for Nordstrom's for several years. Uh, He's a a professor at American River College in Sacramento teaching visual merchandising and fashion promotion. It is truly a pleasure for me to introduce to you Mr. Gerald Otis Simpson, a.k.a. Jerry Goss Simpson. Jerry, welcome, and thanks for going inside the issues. Good morning. How you doing? Doing great. And yourself? I'm feeling great. It's great out here. Good, 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 good. Um, first of all, man, thank you so much for giving us some time this morning um, on a Saturday. Uh, let me start with a kind of general question for you to to elaborate on your background. How does an African-American man, self-taught painter, photographer, make it from Passaic, New Jersey, to art shows at the Sacramento Crocker Art Museum, and other prominent venues throughout the country? Well, it takes a lot of work. It takes a lot of time. It takes effort because what you have to do is promise yourself that you'll constantly show up. A lot of times when we get opportunity to do things, we show up the first time and we never show up again. So I've made a promise to myself to continue painting so that whenever young black people show up to venues where they show art, they'll always see somebody that looks like themselves that is being represented in the show. Um, It's taken a long time, and I have to work harder. As you always hear, we always work harder. I have to make certain that my stuff is excellent. A lot of times, I get shut out by a lot of people because I put my work in such a bracket that I want it to be so good that people think it may be too expensive or or even to the point where, well, who's this guy think he is? So, you know, there's a double-edged sword when you become good and you become polished as a black artist here in America. Is that something that you've talked with other artists about, and is that a a common problem that African-American artists seem to have? Well, a lot of times, you know, when you, when you just try to... It, There's one problem that I find for sure. If your work is truly, truly black, and I have nothing against that, you will actually close doors on a lot of opportunity because a lot of people feel fear that art because it brings about conversation that a lot of people don't want to have. So I find myself as a commercial artist, an artist that just does art for the sake of doing art. I want to do art. I want to see my art in the airport. I want to see my art in the doctor's office in XYZ. So sometimes I will do things that are more abstract and, and, and non-identifiable when it comes to saying, oh, that's a black artist. But that's not saying that I'm trying to be less black. That's just trying to say I'm trying to get paid. <laughs> and now I, I'm glad you made that point because there's nothing wrong with that. Um, uh, but at the same time, you have to avoid the... Uh, uh, and the, the 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 perception of he's selling out, correct? Well, I'm not. I, well, I have to always uh, dodge that bullet. I get told constantly, "Well, you don't want to be black no more." Each and every day I wake up in this world, I'm reminded when I look in the mirror that I'm a black man. But I don't have to keep telling everybody that I'm a black man. Okay, when I do my work, I'm real, I'm going to do a show. 
When someone shows up at the show, if they show up, they'll see I'm black. I'm not gonna. I don't have to preempt everything I do. It. He's a black artist. He's this is black artist. That, you know that has been a problem for black artists in America, whether they recognize it or not. Okay, think about it this way: If someone's a patron of the arts and they want to buy art, if they're not interested in black art, they're never gonna come see your show if you say this is a black art show. When I do a show, I'm doing an art show. If you show up and find out I'm black, then you'll find out I'm black once you show up. I won't have to pre-announce it and then actually have less traffic in my show based on the fact that I put up that roadblock. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. Uh, now, speaking of shows, yesterday you closed a month-long exhibit called This is Dedicated at the Passaic Public Library. What was, yes. what was the theme of that show and why the Passaic Public Library? Well, um, when I was a kid in elementary school in Passaic, I went to um, a school called Number 11, and we had a traveling art teacher that came around. Her name was Mrs. Meek. And Mrs. Meek had given us an assignment to draw a fantasy um, dinosaur called a Braviac. And I did one, and she took my piece and showed it in the library when I was in elementary school. So I had always wanted and had this vision and dream to always go back to that library with my art and do a show. So that's why it was given at the uh, public library. It was also given at the library to have my community travel through the library, uh, to see the library, to reinvent the library, to reintroduce themselves to the library for the sake of the value of reading. I've been a, co- I've been a college professor. I don't have a college degree, but I read everything I get my hands on. Okay, so the value of a book, the value of the library, I wanted to bring it back to my community and make it, let them know that uh, this is an important tool. Um, not only that, I wanted artists in my community to know that you can go to the library and put on shows, okay? It's a venue there to be used. So that's why I went back there. And my hometown means a lot to me. So I, went, I did the whole show based on my hometown. I didn't bring no palm trees in California back there because I didn't <laughs> want to get into that. Who does he think he is bringing these palm trees back in my face? I didn't want to get into that. I wanted to do and celebrate where I come from. You mentioned an art teacher when you were in elementary school. One of the yes. one of the first things that gets cut in these education budget crises are arts programs, whether they be visual or whether they be performing. Um Talk about your, give us your sense of the importance of art in elementary schools. I believe art saved my life. Mrs. Meek told me that art was a privilege. And if you were bad, they would take your privilege away. That scared me to death. I was, I was, I'm a creative, I was a creative child all my life. I've been a creative kid. I am that kid. Okay. So you know, to have someone tell me that my privilege would be taken away, my chance to show out. My father used to call it showing out. Sit down and stop showing off. Well, my chance, I didn't want to risk my chance of being showing out or showing out to be taken away from me. Art was so important to me as a kid that didn't really grasp the eight, uh, the one, two, three, and the two and two and all those algebra type things. I was a creative person. And so when that person came to my school and gave me the chance to be creative, I understood that. When I grew up some years later, I had a chance to be a social worker, paraprofessional in my hometown. And I had a chance to go and see children's um, school records. And so since I was looking at school records, I decided to look at mine. And my school record said in the kindergarten that I had to be kept busy or I would disrupt the whole class meaning I had to be given creative things to shut me down. If you couldn't give me something creative to do, I 